it's been a long time since I've done something like this. I'm gonna film my deadlift session. I am currently following um, my strongman plan on my app. Um, so I'm gonna basically take you through the deadlift session within that. Um, I'm gonna pop it just next to me there. So basically we're starting out with um, some kettlebell swings just to get everything firing nicely. Won't be anything heavy, sort of um, around sort of 50% of what I could kettlebell swing. So it's only like 40, 50 kilos. I literally do six sets of um, three with a minute between each, each set, um, just to get everything nice and firing well. Sort of always start my workouts with an explosive movement first, so a dynamic movement, just to get everything firing properly. It's good to get a bit of power training as well in before we start the strength stuff. So really focusing on trying to be as powerful as possible. I'll then move into my deadlifts, which I'm hoping, I've had a bit of a knee issue, so I'm not sure how it's gonna go. I'm hoping to be in the realms of around 320 um, for some sets of two, but we shall see. Um, I'm gonna just take it as it comes and sort of, yeah, just see how my, my body's feeling, see how my knee's feeling. Gonna move into front squats after that, um, which I always do as part of my deadlift session. I actually think that front squats are one of the most crucial exercises you could do as a strong man. They help with stones, front carries, um, cleaning, pressing, they help with everything. So front squats are one of the most underutilized exercises in um, strong man, in my opinion. So gonna go into those. Next is meant to be Zercher carries, but I'm training at a different gym today um, than I normally do that sort of thing. So I'm gonna do Zercher marches in the rack. Um, that's basically to prepare myself for a shield walk. Um, so if I've got a shield walk coming up, that is something that I could do in the gym that doesn't have a shield or something like that. Just any sort of front carry, um, they're gonna be beneficial too. So Kona's will, shield walk, that sort of thing. So I'm doing, um, yeah, those Zercher marches. Uh, again, so I would normally sort of work in the 70 to 90% of competition weight in that range, um, whatever comp you're doing. Um, obviously the level I've been at in the past, normally the shield balls are around sort of 180 to 200 kilos. So somewhere in 70, 90% of that. Um, I'm probably gonna be working around 150 kilos today for around about 40 marches, there or thereabouts. So that's the next thing. Then I'm gonna move into Pendlay rows, just because I think they're a great strength builder. Another exercise I think that most strong men should be including in their plan. Um, great for obviously things like sandbag pickups, stones, stuff like that. Great for some back development and also just good at making you explosive in those movements as well. So I think they're very beneficial um, for a strong man to do. Then I'm literally just gonna go into a little bit of um, biceps, just some hammer curls. That's more for um, just a bit of extra work, a bit of hypertrophy stuff, but also hammer curls are very beneficial when it comes to lifting stones, sandbags, things like that. Because if you think about the arm position of when you're sort of essentially loading the sandbag or the stones, your arms are pretty much in a hammer curl position. So. Yeah, that'll be the thing that I'll do. And then um, last but not least, I'll do some cable crunches, just as a bit of core work, um, just because your core is ultimately very important when it comes to strongman, whether that be um, doing planks or weighted crunches, something like that. I think it's, um, yeah, very, very beneficial to have a strong core. So got a little bit of a knee issue, so I'm not sure exactly where things are gonna be, but, um, Hopefully it goes well. Okay, so I have my knee sleeves on for the kettlebell swings. I'm just gonna 
slide them down onto my calves just to protect my shins. Um, if any of you have ever noticed, my shins are a bit of a mess as it is. And um, literally, if the bar just touches them, they start bleeding. So for, I put them on for the kettlebell swings just to get the knees white nice and warm. Put them down onto my shins for the deadlift just to stop the bar scratching the crap out of my shins. So I'm using my Fitness Superstore Body Power Titan um, deadlift bar, which is a great deal if any of you are looking for a deadlift bar. They're like 210 pounds, 220 pounds. Plus you can get a discount with Terry 10, gets you 10% off. So literally I think they come out about 200 quid for the bar. And I've gone up to 350 on it, had no problems at all. Um, I would say it can definitely handle a lot 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 more than that which hopefully we'll find out in a few weeks time decent value deadlift bar obviously most of them are like four or five hundred quid so to get one for that sort of price is good going right okay first warm-up set Won't go too mad with the warm-up because um, I'm probably going to do a lot of sets getting up there so I won't bore you with showing you them all. Um, but I'm basically going to go out of 70, 120, 170, um, probably 210. No, actually we'll go 220 just to make the maths easy. Then um, from there, 220. Not sure where I'll go after that, um, but the aim is to get up to 320, so yeah, we'll just sort of work our way up. 25 kilo jumps on each end, till we get to 220, we'll maybe then go 270, and then I'll probably do a jump in between the two. So yeah, gradually just working my way up anyway. So I will jump back in at this point, I'm up at 170 now. Um, it was just to explain about the belt situation. So what I do with my, belt I do the first few sets just without it just to sort of get everything nice and warm I add my belt normally around this point I'd add the soft belt um, sometimes I put it on earlier if I've got a bit of a stiff back it's just good for getting some heat in the area but I um, I haven't put it on yet so I'll put it on for this set just the soft belt again I, I put the straps on when I'm kind of feel like my lifts are slowing down so even on the first few lifts I don't bother with straps um, just because it's a pain in the ass to keep getting them on so I tend to sort of go the first few sets without straps without a belt then add the soft belt then add the big belt and the straps probably around the same time and um, then for the last few sets I'll like tout my legs up do all that I've also got um, a new Cerberus strength um, deadlift suit which I've been wanting to try out I've had it for a couple of weeks I've been wanting to try it out um, but kind of don't, don't feel like I'm ready to do that yet but if it feels good today I might chuck it on for, for one of my sets and just see how it goes So obviously as the weights go up, um, I don't feel like I need to be putting in tons of reps. Um, body's pretty warm, so now they're more feeler sets than um, an actual warm-up set. So I'm just feeling the weight as I go up. Not really attacking it that well at the moment off the floor, which I think is just because that fear of my knee um, kicking in a little bit. But we'll still keep working up and see where we get to. Okay, so I'm going 300 next. Legs are talked up, deadlift slippers are on, belts on, straps are on. A um, little tip here, if you've got any SPD um, lifting straps, a figure of eight, I would recommend putting that one upside down. It just gives you a little bit more in terms of length on them. Um, and if you've got big hands and big wrists like I have, you kind of need that little bit extra all the time. Stronger obviously is not just about building muscle, so I've spent the last god knows how long doing bodybuilding training. 
So my body's not used to doing deadlifts anymore um, and a lot of those sort of big strength movements. So I'm trying to obviously get my body functioning so it can perform those movements well. So it's not a full power, obviously nowhere near it, but I would imagine it would progress pretty quickly. So what the aim kind of is now is to get used to lifting heavy-ish loads and then gradually work my way up the weights. And um, I base the whole program on me having a 355 max. Next time I run through the whole process again, the weights will be pushed up. So hopefully by the time I run through this again, I'm basing it on like a 380 max. Um, but we'll see, you know, it's going to take time um, just to get myself back to where I need to be. Um, but the aim, short term aim is to deadlift 400 by the end of the year. Um, we're in September now, so that's well within my capabilities. Like I said, it's just a case of getting my body used to doing the movements again. Come on. Felt good. Oh, thanks, baby. So um, the plan was to do. Um, well, I just went to chuck my suit on, and um, I feel like I'm destined not to try this suit out because you know I was, I've been talking about having a bit of knee trouble. I literally lifted my leg up to put uh, my knee in the like put my foot in the suit, and I've hurt my knee. So um, I've got a thing called a Baker suit. Um, so it's like a cyst in the back of my knee. It's just causing it to like lock up, um, not function properly. Um, all of a sudden, I get like shooting pains through my knee. Um, but it, you know, it's one of them things. I've had it for years. It's like this is problem's been on and off. Um, so yeah, it's nothing to to nothing to worry about. I've been dealing with it for a long time. So um, yeah, I just. It, it doesn't change anything we keep pushing on keep trying to get stronger just means that every now and then i have to sort of back off so i'm just trying to get my knee sort of functioning we'll still try and get it all done um but i'm thinking the front squats might be a little bit too much of a stretch at the moment so we'll see um at the moment i can't get my leg straight it's almost straight but yeah it is what it is so what i've been doing is some stuff that Rocco, who works on Giants Live, given me to do some different stretches, some different mobility things, and it is improving. But um, if anyone saw me at Birmingham, they probably saw me hobbling around quite a bit. Um, so yeah, anyway, but it's getting better. I mean, the fact that I can come in and pull three sets of two at 320 pretty, pretty easily, um, I'm happy with that. So I know my strength's going up, just gotta navigate this slight issue until it's fixed. I've been warming up the front squats, they don't feel too bad. A little bit niggly, but not, not anything major um, at the moment. So I've worked up to 150. Now next set um, would be my working sets at 180. So I'm just gonna have a little, little um, dabble with that, see how it feels. wasn't the five um, that obviously was the plan. Four, um, just a little bit of pain, felt easy enough. Just um, when I sunk right into the bottom of that squat, I can just feel like a pain in the back of my knee. So thought it's best to leave it there. Um, so I won't do any more sets of that. Would have been three sets, but 180 for four. 
with a bad knee, I feel like I'm really overcompensating on the right as well. I'm leaning a lot onto my right side, which then obviously can cause problems there as well. So best I just leave that for now, but still got a bit of work in. So yeah, all good. I think we're going to be pushed for time because it took me about 20 minutes to get my legs straight after the deadlift. Um, so not going to have time to do the ab and grip work today, but still always one foot in front of the other trying to take a step forward and um, yes sometimes you have to navigate around the injuries but that's the nature of getting stronger whether you're competing or not you know sometimes you you've got to sort of back off on things to um, let them heal up that's just the nature of strength training you're pushing your body to the limit and everything else all right here we go so 150 around about 40 marches um, there or thereabouts, or until I get tired. <laughs> I'm massively overrun with time. I'm gonna do these last few a little bit different. I'm gonna use no straps on the Pendlay rows, which I would normally, because um, I can get my grip work in there, which I'm not gonna be able to do afterwards. And I'm gonna super, super set with the hammer curls, which means I won't be going as heavy, but when it comes to hypertrophy movements, you don't always have to go heavy. So long as you go very close to failure, it kind of has the same benefit, so you might have to do more reps to get to that point. But um, when it comes to building muscle, going close to failure is the most important thing, more so than the weight and the number of reps. So whether you're doing eight reps and it's virtually failure, or 20 reps and it's virtually failure, the muscle growth is actually very similar, um, almost identical. Just if you want to get strength, you tend to go on the lower end of the spectrum. But obviously where I'm doing the pendlay rows beforehand, my biceps are going to be a bit worn out. So I'm going to be weaker on the hammer curls. So I'm still going to go to the same point of failure, um, which is close to it within a couple of reps. And then, um, so I'll get the same benefit in terms of muscle growth anyway, because they're already pre-fatigued from the pendlay rows. There's something to think about with your strongman programming. If you want it all done for you, it's there on my app. Um, $19.99 a month, $49.99 for three months, or there's a free week and then six pound a week from then moving forwards. Um, so you've got a free week to try it out if you want, if that's an option. But if you want to go at this yourself, think about movements. So what movements are going to be beneficial to certain things? I'm not saying overthink it, but think, but when you, rows are uh, a great exercise, obviously, it's a bent over rows. But from a strongman point of view, something like a Pendlay row would be way better because then you can start to utilize that movement is very similar to picking up the stone off the floor or picking up the sandbag. And sort of think about things like this, break down the movement into areas where you're weak and then think of exercises that will benefit that. So, you know, it could be the bench press might not benefit you that much to get um, some tricep, extra tricep power, because obviously there's a lot of um, pec involved as well. So maybe a floor press is better. When you think about the angle, when you're pressing overhead, from here to here's legs, and then it's there. So 
working that range is when you need to be really strong. So something like a floor press could be very beneficial. Uh, maybe, like I was saying about the sandbag thing, doing a pen lay row but with a football bar. Um, because then your hands are more in the position like this, like you would be when you're picking up a sandbag. Like I said, instead of doing bicep curls, do hammer curls because you think when you come up with a stone, your arms are in this position. They're not supinated. Now, I'm not saying don't do bicep curls because actually they can be good for keeping the biceps healthy and stretched. But when you're doing your sort of movements that are beneficial to your strength, think about the movements that you're going to be doing with the strongman events. When you're planning out your program, group together movements and think about what events you're training. And then obviously, then look at the events that you're not getting the work on and things like that and incorporate those in as actual events. See, you know, you get the idea. You kind of need to think about the movement patterns of strongman events and think about how things in the gym can benefit you. You don't necessarily have to train events to get better at events, although obviously it does help with practicing the technique. But if you do bits of the movement where you're weak within the gym, obviously your progress is going to be much quicker. Anyway, I hope that helps. Okay, that's session done. Took a lot longer than I expected just because of my knee issue. Come here, look behind me. Been doing cardio for God knows how long waiting for me. Just disappointed I haven't got to try that suit out yet because I know a lot of people are giving them rave reviews, getting a lot of um, big lifts with them. So I really want to get cracking with it because I'd like to try and deadlift a thousand pounds next year, which is 453. Um, so obviously if that can give me a, a good bit extra, I'm a lot closer. So yeah, I mean, I think realistically training's going pretty well, pretty solid. It's great being able to track the workout on the app as well, following that. And um, obviously there's loads of information on the app as well. So educational videos, interviews with guys, um, other strong men, stuff like that. Loads of stuff about nutrition, training, recovery, mindset all sorts so get yourself signed up if you don't know where to turn but hey baby sorry i delayed you yeah she's, she's literally been doing she did cardio before training did her whole session and then did more while she was waiting for me but thanks baby i appreciate it yeah anyway that's the session done pretty decent one like i said check out the app if you get a chance and um, look forward to the next video. The next one will be in Vegas. So yeah, looking forward to that, seeing the World Deadlift Championships and hopefully I'll get inspired to go on and pull some big numbers in the next couple of months.